Sure. All right, so why don't we get, get started? Um, David's going to, oh, he's up already. So starting, uh, starting off the, just a general thing, Who, who's still unclear about what this acceptance criteria thing is and wants to go over the general idea of it a little bit more. We had a general session yesterday. We've had tons of calls last couple of months, things like that, but is anyone? I'd like to know where the documentation is or what the timeline for documentation is so that I can go as a team lead to this wiki page and know that this is exactly what I need to do for each of my projects. What do you mean exactly what you need to do? Because like, the acceptance criteria is outlined on the wiki. David, can you pull right, up the other page? It is up. It should be upstream development or something. Right. It is documented here as to the general concepts. Yeah, I see the concepts, but what I need is an overview of, I need to go to this page and fill out details on this Excel one page. spreadsheet. There's one page. Which is this one. That and that's what we're going to do right projects. now. Okay. All right. And uh, so the idea is that we're not prescribing certain things. Right. We're saying we, we want you guys to have these things. How you do those, up to, up to you guys. We just want to ensure that those things are happening so that we can talk about it. So like, we talked about this yesterday in the general session. If we, we want some sort of code review, peer review process. That's where we end the statement, and you guys pick it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. we hope over time best practices emerge and things naturally rise to the top as the easiest, you know, whether it be launch pad or something else, but not prescribing those. Okay. Any and I think we've, we've used your list to make sure that for all of the Do projects we did, uh, we were we were good you know, with, with the adoption of those yeah. practices because essentially we've taken the. Uh, the general uh, launchpad approach of you know, using uh, using the system to um, enforce code reviews and, yeah. and, and that part of quality. But just to reviewing the list of projects is also a good way for us to make sure that it's it's, you know, it's implemented everywhere. That no project is left behind. No project left behind. <laughs> That'll be our initiative. Uh, right. Right. Uh, please, yeah, no. we're doing that. That's sticking. <laughs> we're going to it. All right. So uh, can someone? Uh, or someone already did the yeah, um, project tracking, and then the, can someone also put the? Uh, do you mind dumping the um, upstream development URL into the? Uh, well, this is the one that's currently yeah. on the page. Or maybe David can the uh, other wiki page. Maybe it should it just take off project tracking actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is here. Yeah. Is there any issue if I edit that uh, thing right now? Is anyone else editing? Mm -hmm. It'll tell you if yes. I think we should. We, we can work in the yes yeah. pad, uh, and then put that back into the wiki. That's fine. I just want uh, the goal of the session is actually to go through and get names right. associated right. with projects, things like that. So. Because what I did is, so I took the um, the summary of the agenda that was in the blue, <laughs> put that in the um, yes pad, and then for each of the you know, project yep. groups, um, answer the uh, the questions you want. <laughs> So, uh, stating the goal of, the, of this session will be one is to answer any lingering questions um, to go over again if we need to. And if no one has any issues you want to talk about, then we're actually going to jump into the other wiki page that David had up here. Can you click through the tab? Mm, this one? And try to fill out the various components here, basically. Which project, who is the person to go to on that project, and then we'll ask those people to go fill out the rest of the details on this. Get with uh, various members of the platform team if need be to figure out what the, those things are. <coughs> so starting on the first part of what the goal of the session would be, again, any questions, anything, any topic or point people want to go over? So it's answer one of my only concerns there is that, like how to make the tests. Why don't we just say Debian rules makes the tests? So we just updated Debian's rules file. Why do you want to document that in a wiki? I don't think I understand what you're saying. So like, Debian, you, Debian rules can do a check, right? You can force when you do the build, it does it make check which runs text. So <coughs> we'll put that in the rules file. But, but you can maintain that data there. But no. you can't run any um, all tests at build time. There has to be tests that there are tests that have to be run afterwards. Correct. So we okay. could make this a mandatory requirement if a package has tests, make test has to be enabled. Correct. Right, that would be yeah, the acceptance criteria that you could set. Yeah. Not especially when you build the package. Because some projects like Unity are depending on test stuff that are mm -hmm. in universe, and we yeah. don't want to promote I think we Google have to, tests and if all if these kind of applications. If quality is important, we should promote them. They should be in If they're main. not, if they're not in main, 
then we're not officially supporting them. So right. we aren't officially supporting our own test frameworks. Right. You choose your test framework as this. Mm -hmm. We don't enforce this rule. And uh, dependencies get automatically pulled in with NMI. Main versus universe. Well, that. I think that would be another well, I, acceptance criteria. From I your also side. don't want to say that <clears throat> this project has every project has to do X or every project has to do Y. It's, it's what's appropriate for the project. So if there's a project where it's appropriate and the best, best thing to do, I expect that the person who's maintaining that project says this is the best thing to do for my project. We can ensure the tests have been run without yeah. having the tests being run in the build of the package. Right. You know, So it complicates things, bringing things in the main and stuff, yeah. adding well, dependencies, there's no reason. You're going to write what? tests that are on a non supported framework that the other people need to Rerun. Like, uh, no, there, there just might be a tool that gets run during the test process. You know, just it's not necessarily part of the test. It's just a tool that the tests use. I guess my yeah. my concern is yeah. yeah. My concern is the idea. This isn't just a a weird universe versus main. This is a, main is that canonical is supporting it, mm -hmm. and if canonical requires acceptance tests, but is not going to support the platform of those tests and puts it in universe. That doesn't make sense to me. That stuff should be in main and Some should be tools. supported by canonical. Again, I guess I just don't quite see what the, the, the challenge we're doing here. It's like, st we state the problem, the, the, the problem the, statement, we state that what's expected. Also, now we've got to go through and work out details about various cases and edge cases and stuff like that. And then if those things happen, let's have the discussion. But we don't need to, we don't need to this isn't a grammar. Yeah. We're not making a grammar for every, yeah. every case. You know, I, I guess it's, it's just an overarching question in my mind is, do we promote all of our test frameworks or do we have a process <coughs> where we have to promote our test frameworks so that they are officially supported by Canonical or do we not? Do we just have what we have today, which is where we have some of them in main, some of them in universe? That's an overall question that I think we should answer. You're using a framework. Let's use a specific thing. You must have something in mind. No, no, nothing, nothing Google specific. Test. Google test. But Google tests? Yeah. yeah. And what I had to update it for so these guys because they wanted a new version, but it's something which is really difficult to maintain. Um, basically, Google has no knowledge of packaging, so it's really hackish, mm -hmm. packaging. And the code itself is not good, so that so you can are, say we support okay, it. Okay, so yeah, are you basically asking, do we need to start that. maintaining Google tests and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, if, you're not going to start maintaining J unit, you're not going to start maintaining an X unit, but you're going to use it. Yeah. No. If it's really if it's really a pain from a packaging point of view, then we should embed that in our in our but, project. And well, has to, in, in some ways, yeah. testing becomes it's a dependency of the project. The so no, yeah, the important thing is that we have the check. That we know it's been tested, yeah. <laughs> whether it's been built in the package or not yeah, is I not the question. As long as we have the comfort yeah. to know that it's been tested. Right. Uh, Jason, uh, <coughs> here, um, uh, through that list called project tracking, uh, I was wondering um, how big or small uh, what's the threshold to that project being introduced here. And uh, what about the projects which are started uh, as non well streams in the past, which haven't been part of this new project just now? The Gen general rule we like to use here is if uh, Canonical maintains as part of a uh, Canonical upstream, we would like it on here. So more information is better just to have someone who we can go to and ask questions about that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, so should we go through the list? Because I think. I mean, just, as long as no one yeah, so has, has questions, but we can ask them during the cycle too. So why don't you. Start going down, David. Right, so. There's a couple of blanks, uh, obvious blanks here in Unity 2D and 3D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we need a point of contact right. on that. Can you see what else the this? Yeah, my my overlays, Cobas, Unicode. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go down the, the product. So David, are you taking notes on Etherpad right now? Uh, yes, I can. So. So. What I was thinking uh, for this session is to consider the big, you know. Um, <coughs> code bases we do have, uh, and I'm putting composites, you know, as a special case because the code base is important, and also uh, I do consider. I at this point I consider cannot, uh, comp is one of those yeah. that it's a quasi canonical upstream, so we need yeah. it on here because we need to have those yeah. discussions and fully expect that the new so DX release manager. <laughs> keep comp is in mind. I'm extremely high risk. <laughs> yeah, I keep it always in mind. You know. <laughs> so. Right, they, they may have the same like you know, uh, release manager on the platform side, but um, I think we can take the initial and it's closely related projects like Linux, D, 
about legitimacy, right? As a, as a first step, okay. residencies. Campus has, you know, an independent project. Well, so let's just do this really lightweight then. Yeah. Let's just let's right. just list the names. All we need is the DX contact person on that, and then let the de that person go fill out the rest of the wiki, so we don't have to go through do this too much because we can right. just keep it light. So the full, almost full list. Uh, the Utah stack is now in the Atom project list um, at the moment. Is here, so you know there are a lot of projects. Awesome. That means we can. If this is the list, we can nail down ambiguity. They are all there. Okay. So, so you, it looks like there is forty <coughs> or so right there. So I've got a script that dumps it. Sorry. I've got a script that dumps it. So, so, I've got a script that dumps it, so okay. I'll cut and paste it. Okay. So if we got forty or so yeah, here, do an over under. Bet we can get through in five minutes. Some of these are now on main. The yes. sign was, was listed and, and said like two things, things, so. for example. Okay, yeah. put it at the top. So we can delete some of the ones that are old that I never got around to doing. Yeah. Delete LO menu bar. So David, can you take that? David, can you take that? No, uh, the, it's, it's in the pad. It's in the pad? Okay. It's in the pad. So remove Clotec, maybe. Uh, add Unity Dance Music. Okay, let's go through. Okay, why don't we just go through real quickly? Um, or or yeah, people yeah. have the easy pad open to start adding themselves to it, but I'll start naming them off. You can also, so, uh, Batman and GTK. Yeah. Who is David? It's, it's a, do you have the pad open? I don't. We're looking, so we're looking right yeah, through the screen. Okay. Look at number five on the top. That's where we're starting. Okay. Yes, that's okay. Well, okay, sorry. So, who, who's, who's the person to fill out the rest of the wiki for at menu GTK? That's me. Ted. Ted? Yeah. Okay. Indicator application? It's Ted. So, Ted. I can tell well, this project yeah, the yeah. first three are Ted. Ted, okay. And now Ubuntu, I think this is a this is a administrative mm -hmm. project, yeah. so we can uh, put this side. <coughs> Bam, this is Jason. Ah, yeah. Got it. Two. <laughs> well, you are not an evolution indicator now. Uh, well, can we start to start the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. damn. That's you. So it's your name. That's your name. Ted refuses to fix his bugs. It's me. Nobody. I know. I thought you were going to get up. I thought you were going to get up. Okay. Next one. That's the ministry of projects. Ah, you need to have said pool. This is an interesting one. Do, do you think we really need to uh, to go with this one? Because if you ask, uh, it needs to have a release criteria, and we need to make sure that icon doesn't take two seconds to render because someone referred to the <laughs> background image. That never happened. <laughs> that really never happened. <laughs> so I think it's Sladen. Yeah. For Unity Asset Pools. Paul Sladen. Sorry, can you change color that sentence? Sorry. Can you repeat the first part? Yeah. So you need you know about Unity Asset Pool. Yes. The set of delivery that the design is doing. I think that Sladen is the maintainer of it. Mm -hmm. So he should be the one putting his name on this component. What we have been trying to move towards slightly unsuccessfully this cycle um, is often those of studio designers directly checking things in. Um, yeah, but this but is the release manager, manager yeah, not, so the, okay. well, so not the individual people commit, or everyone can commit to it. So we need to find this one, it's shared, it just... Uh, the, the well, I think this is just who has to fill out the rest of the database, not who you necessarily will commit to it. It's who's the release manager. Yeah. Right. Like Jason, I okay. yeah. Can you insert on your list and say who, who's the district? Where are we going to put that though? Just put it at the end or something like that. So mm -hmm. the first side is DX, the last end of it's a distro person. So, so oh, okay. okay. is he's setting up for you. Do you want me to put another list? I can cut paste the same list in another section. Well, if, you guys, if you guys use the front, we'll use the back. Kind of like. <coughs> oh, I was trying to put it in the launch pad workout until they come up as well. Yeah, so you know if you didn't do it. Oh, person. yeah, so it can be part of that. Yeah. But Jason is around, so that's why I was wondering. So, what makes sense? Mm -hmm. Do you want to illustrate or do you want to just care about the work? I don't care about the work. Yeah, we, can, yeah. we can change it later. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, the, goal, the goal would be to make sure, you know, on both sides of this, who's that? Uh, yeah, these are administrative. Right? Okay. 
Unity Foundations and Unity Shell are just administrative mm -hmm. groups, right? Yeah. <coughs> you need to add Unity Lens music as well uh, to the list. Nobody uses music. Who's, who's uh, releasing music? Is that Alex? That's administrative. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's music. It's Alex, Alex, Alex. 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 So, okay, well, so nothing, nothing anyway <coughs> for you. Okay. This is already the, uh, the circuits and the maintenance you were doing. That AU. Is there anything that's not happening for the exit? So, now if I was this part of this list, mm -hmm. make sure we have You should add nuts as well. Right, did nuts. Okay. Yeah. 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 And my name's next to a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> and Compass is not part of this list, right? So, watch out. Can we put Compass on there, though? Right. I, yeah, I, just because it's not part, I just want to get everything on the list so we can. Uh, right. So, you should ask. What's your. Jay, what's your. Thumper? Thumper. Thumper. Sorry? What's Launchpad J's Launchpad ID? Jasmine. Jasmine. No, yeah. Oh, J. 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 Oh, 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 J. Jasmine. Yeah, I guess. So okay. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, somebody did it. Oh. I'm just so trying to type here, people. For compies, you have to add <laughs> compies, deep compies config, compies config well, plugin its main. We want compies core, uh, compies plugins main. Yeah, deep compies config. Yeah. Python compies config. Uh, compies config JC things back in. Right. Well, <laughs> but, yeah, but that's what we you would support and it is. So compis config j settings like him. Uh, we don't want to support CCSM. <laughs> and are there any new libraries being created this cycle that we gotta talk about? Well there is deep decoration, but, but even if we do, I guess we'll just go through the process of the CSM. Yeah, not think of it. Uh, should. We have the list in here, we've released the same way for many times. Okay. So if we get back to the uh, to the main table, the column with uh, with filled is which one? So we basically did the project and then. Oh, the uh, problem is yeah, it's a wiki, so we can't all edit it. Right. So we will dump it here and we get to, to go through. And each individual person on the their name, the DX side name, mm -hmm. go through and fill out the wiki <coughs> with as part of one of their work items to go um, fill out the details. Right. But so can you clarify again the Tron test owner if you're seeing that as a upstream role or mm -hmm. as yes, a no, right, okay. Upstream. So this is the person that ensures that the it's test it's coverage is maintained, right? Release manager. So they're it's basically manager. vouching for the tests that passed in trunk. Right. These are the, the well, I'm looking at it as a developer. Well, this I mean, the but I think for us that's just the same thing. But um, I guess, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, it's, it's a hat. No, yeah, I'm looking at it as like, like uh, I don't, I don't have off the top of my head which one you're maintaining, but you're maintaining one. You got the test because you're writing the test as you write the code and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so I guess I see, but yeah, potentially assuming we're working large, there's two roles there: developer and at least manager. Could be a different person who's in charge of actually bringing it all together and trying to do the merges, rolling tarballs, saying it's ready for release. So like my as Thursday, Wednesday, is mostly <coughs> merging in all these contributions from everybody and you know ensuring quality and releasing, and that's. You know, Thursday's release manager. So the owner of that, yes, like that would be you. But yeah. I'm, I guess the expectation is that as developers write code, they're writing tests. Yeah, so well, sometimes they reject mergers. Yeah, yeah that's right. So <laughs> you know. Laying out both expectations. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then that's going past the... Uh, that's a release uh, manager role. Going past over, going to the distro and its test is where we can. The project says... Did he, uh, BAMF you? For distro side? Yeah, yeah. For distro. Yeah, for distro side. Okay. Is your yeah. lunch ID the yeah. drops? Yeah. It says the X is ready to go. As a rule, yeah. Those packages. How about um, Unity Asset Pool for the distro side? I can take it. I'll take it, yeah. Oh, Lib Unity is missing, I guess. No, it's not missing. here. Oh, it's there? Uh, okay. <coughs> you want to take D? Uh, no, okay, we'll take D. <coughs> Lib Unity, Lib Unity missed, Max. Um, and, and Chase, you're also appearing on the right side because you're also releasing 
mm -hmm. doing the, um, the platform creation at the moment. So is that a good thing or? Well, we've got that in a couple of different cases. We've got Ken on both sides. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to happen until we get too big and stuff, but right now is it's that, what, it's the reality Is that okay, situation. or do we want to have a barrier? <clears throat> I think that's actually so okay. It's, I mean, fine. it's just there's, you're vouching on both sides. The tests have been done on the platform side. I'm vouching that we've done the tests on the platform. and you know, Just get more trust. Yeah, just different hats. And, you know. mm -hmm. Ask Martin about wearing many hats. Okay, I said you're taking a compass. Yeah, yeah, I said. Taking a compass. No. This is what I'm seeing here. <laughs> Your name's on there yeah. next to the distro side for compass. Look here. I start. So who? Compass. It was just a joke, I didn't take it. Ah. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> Funny one, dude, Rox. <laughs> Good, nice try. Yeah, it was a try, you know. <laughs> okay. Do we have any that are missing? What's up? Well, is indicator, indicator power is not on here? It's not? Nope, I don't have it. If there's you know, any missing, I think I mean, that's minor components that have already been released, which means that. Put your name on it, right? Yep. It's worth it. Um, and, and, and what the chain uh, usually is. <coughs> Generally, we, do have, we have like Ted and Ken. Or uh, me and the drugs, or um, well, it'll, it'll, here, here's the deal. I guess if, if something doesn't make it to this list, the first time a developer goes to work on it, mm -hmm. the thought should be, uh, this wasn't on the list. I'll have to go add it to the list. Right. Or distro too, if they see it wasn't on the list, <coughs> the question they're taking it in. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Just a mm -hmm. you know, quick communication would be great. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. It looks like we got that list all filled out. So now, um, if everyone on the <coughs> David, you flip them back to the. Uh, Around here? Yeah. So, if it, so every one on the DX side, if your name is associated with one of those projects, can you go fill out the rest of this spreadsheet up to the distro readiness test? So, give your trunk the test branch, where the PPA will be building, things like that. And then on the distro side, if your name is on the right side, take that, say where your tests are and how you're documenting them, and put your name there as the, per as the point of contact for those. So the feature sign-off owner, does that need to be someone on, can that be me as well? Or does that need to be someone on the distro team? Feature sign-off owner typically is not on the distro team. I mean, right. first for DX stuff. I said it was going to be John. No. In a lot of cases, it'll be John or Mark or somebody like that, or Ollie or David or somebody like that. Someone basically saying this feature is ready to go into a bunch of tools <coughs> he's asked for, ready to get off. In the like, case of John and stuff, we're talking about like making sure he's involved early because the feedback loops need to be tighter. Yeah. So we <coughs> yeah, we're basically saying who's the fe uh, Chase asked who's the feature sign off. So, so, so for so the on, on the design side um, to make sure we can get a fast response back to you because some of them will just be saying yes, yes, yes. Um, Nick Taylor has volunteered to do a check in the first instance, so all of these are should go to Nick Tate, and then Nick Tate will um, pass. The, he'll leave that. Then we'll check them and we'll either sign them off directly, then they're okay, or they'll pass them on to myself as a bridge to do some other. So you want Nick to be the point of contact? Yeah. The, the, no. the initial one. And then, then, then they'll push them out to the people who will use that. For everything test related, <coughs> right? Uh, no, no, Unity. Everything, everything Unity related. Because I see. All right. But I see that there are also uh, all the components that were, um, that were developing for which, well, it's a technical feature. So. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I'm yeah. Well, that's why I said before. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be him. But then, so, like, for instance, uh, Robert's going to be the sign-off person on Light DM. Uh, somebody in design will probably be the sign-off on Unity Greeter. So there's a distinction. So in your case, if you touch, I don't know who the sign-off person is going to be. Yeah. Work that out. Figure out who that person is. If it's you, it's you. If it's somebody else, you know. Yeah, because like Mark, for instance, you know. We're going to need to be very responsive to you guys if you're saying stuff can't be landed until it's signed off. We've got an obligation to get back yes. to you very quickly. 
So our, our plan is have a look at that position first, and then we'll see what the work plan is, and then that position is well for transitioning the full time design of the road plan. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. Do you have a specific one you're worried about? Well, it, I guess it's just I'm seeing myself as, you know, on, on this column <laughs> and on that column and on that column and like the whole thing. And you rock. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. good. And, and so if that's okay with that, that's fine. That will that's happen. That's fine. I just, you know, I don't want there to be this assumption that there is some kind of firewall we, or something. We haven't hired it yet, but we have a role plan for release manager type of functionality in QA who would then, if a feature is not driven by design or by mark, then go in and check what are the requirements for meeting them. And That's great, okay. So in the lack of this hire yet, um, it's either me or Chase then who's doing it until we have that person involved. Who do you report to now, by the way? Ollie. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I would delegate to him anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, chances are right now you have a better understanding of what's exactly. delivered than anybody else. Exactly. Anyway, so it makes sense. Because there were also other questions that were a bit more difficult in the group terms, essentially bug management, which has been a contentious issue sometimes. Bug management being. I, 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 I like trying discussing what's on the wiki better. Huh? I like discussing the items on the wiki better. Which wiki? Well, I, I'm the criteria. I, I, feel, I think we're done with this, so yeah. we can move on to other items. So, and last chance, anyone got any questions on this so far? Good. Good thing. All right, so David, what did you want to ask about? Well, uh, so the other questions that were on the um, on the blueprint were uh, so feature sign off we've seen, test and implementation sign off. Uh, I think that's clear. Um, PPAs, trunk test run automatically, who's responsible for managing bugs in Ubuntu? The Ubuntu team. Um, it depends on what you mean. If you're talking, so if it's an Ubuntu bug, you're know, talking about Ubuntu, you know, past <coughs> distro, as us, but the expectation is always that upstream manages their bugs. And we've clearly established that. So like if there's a, an indicator bug, you know, you gotta find some way to triage that or, and then figure out how to fix it, and if there's a Unity bug, same thing. So, big umbrellas and stuff. A lot of our bugs, I mean, is, you're talking about the ones that are source package bugs, or the ones that are upstream bugs. So I don't think we should be first in line for triaging source package bugs, because the source package bugs aren't necessarily our bugs. For instance, their machine can't suspend, so they fire all a bug on indicator session. And 99% of the time, not their machine not suspending isn't an indicator session issue. And it needs so, to go through the triage <coughs> process that exists in Ubuntu, not our triage process. <coughs> but there's a point at which you may be on your team, the ones who would know definitively if that's actually the case. So essentially how that works for us is we've got, if someone has a misassigned bug or something like that, imagine, imagine you're the upstart person, you get all these bugs you can't boot, but it's gotta get out. So the, we have a DA that ends up mm -hmm. looking at this thing. That's not yeah. the appropriate one, it's gonna reassign all that sort exactly. of stuff. So the, kind of the expectation is there's DAs that live upstream as well that do a lot of that. Because all, but I think, I think the yeah. DAs that live upstream should be. So more specifically, the the you you're looking into both these um, upstream bugs, but you're also looking into the new ones. How many bugs? Right. Because so. most of the time, or well, the case of Unity, and when there are like no, uh, you know. My system is, is not responding, this is unity for us. That kind of bug. Um, it's maybe not uh, directly a, a unity bug, but most of the time the downstream and upstream ones are, are the same, right? And you have this unified tool, which was ensuring that they were all aligned. Well, because what, what I, I can hear what Ted's saying, and I'm, I'm parsing it through to this, is that we, we don't want Ted spending his time on a bug list that's 400 long, and there's so many of those. So that's why. Right. Yeah, so and we will have to increase that capacity yes. right. yeah. eventually. I think that should be. I mean, I guess I feel like that capacity, at least for the initial triage, should be on the desktop team. Well, so it's, it's, well it's, that's where it comes in anyways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, yeah. but it's, but a, then, it's a here or there situation, so then, and we, only, the, we but, only have so many DAs too, and while we're trying to increase but it, let's we have someone dedicated But let's there, say yeah. we hired a DA. Where should that person go? And I think that for handling the source package issues, that person should be 
in desktop team. And then for ones that they're sure are upstream indicator session ones, they can add well, bug tasks. There's also the and argument our, that our DA should handle the bug how, much, how much extra time do we spend dealing with having bugs assigned to both the upstream project and the distro? I, I like what the software center's done, where they have one. I don't, I don't like that because there's a good chance that we could, uh, let's say, my bug's fixed, committed, and you distro patch it. It's fixed, released on the distro. That's true. I mean, and, that's the advantage. But or with, I've got a bug that is fixed, released, and you guys haven't <coughs> made the package yet. So I'm going to come and see that difference because there is a difference there, and there's Certainly. time and there's processes that are important <coughs> for both of those. And so, not representing that difference is just hiding it. But it kind of complicates things if we're trying to get good lists of things that need to be worked on and stuff. It complicates because depending on the view you're looking on, it shows as new or confirmed. And then you, if you're looking at it, the upstream package, you know, just when you're not looking at that bug, if you do like a list of all the bug, or, uh, bug reports against like a bunch of desktop or something, um, we don't we don't see the upstream stack the report. So it kind of well, complicates uh, things. I think it, it really depends on where the bugs come from. Mm -hmm. If uh, you're talking about general QA reports, because they are like people already aware of the system, Project, mm -hmm. those bugs will directly go to the upstream projects. Mm -hmm. And of course from there it can move to the right components. Mm -hmm. But if, if we are talking about bugs coming up coming from users at distro level, that should have a first level of triad mm -hmm. at distro level. And then, Certainly. Yeah, you know. So I think it has to be both ways, not not either or. Yeah, I found that like pretty understand that I have to go through I have to go through all the ones downstream. And it's only me that can be tied between the duplicates, you know, so said we'll have to maybe a total of three minus two, but essentially I'm the person who wants to stay with the boat. So it seems that a bit of a waste of time for someone to guess that they have to go through it, and maybe it just takes only three hours of the three hundred for the path. Yeah, but isn't that the you telling Omar and another DA to just stay out of that area? Isn't that then the solution to the problem? Um, well, it's very tough to go through all the path, so that they'll go through <coughs> that, that's what they do by default, yeah. and you were just concerned about wasting their time because you know you have a very narrow focus and know both states upstream and downstream better. Yeah, so why why can't we just exclude this sort of area, your domain, out of what they're looking at? But you understand. I know it takes what to do there. Yes. But there's, I mean, there's, there's been cases where they've, I mean, distro, not, I don't want to desensitize it, but have dropped patches because they said, hey, you know, this is not stable, or this is, you know, the, and that should be totally their choice on whether they distro patch things out, distro patch things in. I don't want to restrict them from that, and the, that state should be reflected correctly. Like if I think it's fixed and they disagree, that's... Well, so maybe we can figure out a different approach to this, but what I don't want to have happen is what we had happen last cycle, where at some point there were, in the Unity Upstream project, there were hundreds of untriage bugs. Not like even action or whatever, there's just hundreds of untriage bugs. And so when we identify who that person is, the we said pretty clearly the Upstream is responsible for doing all of their triage on that project. Now, if we want to get to the distinction of where it comes in and all that sort of stuff, well, we can argue about that. But, but hey, does everyone understand the clear expectation about? I think that's an unfair expectation because you don't expect the same thing from, let's say, GNOME. GNOME, you, if it comes in as a package bug on GNOME, if it doesn't go to the GNOME bugzilla, you don't really expect GNOME developers to be reading Launchpad. And there's a reason for that because you expect to look at it and say, hey, is this a distro thing? Is it because of a distro integration? You evaluate it as a distro, and then for the appropriate bugs, you send it upstream. And so you're saying... So but what happened last cycle then with all those untriage bugs? Was well, I'm not, saying that's, I'm not saying that's a problem, but I'm saying if we're going to look at fixing that problem by adding defect analysis to be able to handle that, I think that should happen in the desktop team. Well, look, there's a defect analysis. We could pull them in the desktop team, or we could leave them with you guys in the DX team. I don't, it's, to me, that feels like six of one, half a dozen of another. And then we get we get to a little bit of semantic hair mm -hmm. splitting at this point. But so but so so now that we have Omar full time on DX, let's use him. 
Okay. Let's use them to, to triage the bugs that but, way. And, and almost every time it's going to be the same. Omar's going to get overloaded at some point. I, mean, I, I fully expect. Overloaded. Overloaded. I fully expect. So we hire Omar too. So there, that's, there are two we'll aspects Omar to that. And, and what I've seen during the last cycle is that we were getting a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Essentially, and so, but that's why. The is is moving. Uh, you know, as we go, and most of the bug reports, unfortunately, that the people spend time to uh, you know to register in the system, we can't use them. Not enough information, not an ability to reproduce the issue, which means that we'll have to be stricter with that. That is, sorry, you've wasted your time because we have no way to act on this bug. But so, but just remember in that situation, an inaction is worse than anything else. So, yeah. so leaving them on triage means that. Totally agree. It's, it's yeah, yeah, there's something that happens that we're not aware of and, and we can't let happen. Yet. So I like the fact that we're trying to solve a problem. We got Omar on full time. I love that. Fully expect they'll be overloaded. Fully expect that. CD and release management, all these other things is, is going to be overloaded. That's part of but, right. managing a growing platform, and then we'll have to. So, two, two things that I think are going to play positively the cycle is first that this um, policy of having a, a development version that is <coughs> stable, it's a bit of a. Uh, <coughs> Let, let's see how it goes, but uh, if we don't, if we can uh, have less of that noise generated by platform changes, that's going to decrease the number of, uh, you know. Well, obviously, one of the goals of, of not letting a package come in until it's ready right. means that noise should be reduced because we had a lot of churn last so, cycle. With which is why, you know, I'm, 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 I'm moving forward with this, this plan, and uh, one of the things with it. The, the second thing is, again, uh, as upstream and, and, and Ubuntu, we need to agree that we need to be stricter, right? Because we've been, we've been tracking bugs, you know, not necessarily a release, uh, the release team or et cetera, but some bugs we can be do um, much with them because they were incomplete and so on. So the policy of tracking bugs should be stricter and, um, you know, not, a, not enough information, put it aside, and focus on the bugs we can actually... Very much so, yeah, very yeah. much so. Well, the thing in the end, uh, <coughs> it's the upstream projects responsibility to fully take care of the bug, including triaging, getting, getting rid of the uh, useless ones, and mm -hmm. or moving around those who still have other projects. So each, each upstream should have dedicated time, either within the same development team, or dedicated person taking care of that, uh, to, to handle that. I think expecting someone else from outside to do all, the le all levels of triaging is that does not uh, work about the mountain. So, so one of the things that I anticipate happening with the way we're changing this too is that there should be, as David mentioned, less noise going upstream. It should be we should catch a lot of those early before it actually gets into a bunch of so there's <coughs> less ambiguity about where it fits. Well, you know, if we release into the distro during alpha, came into the distro, all that sort of stuff. We should be getting a lot of those in the cycle that is is high in critical loads. We can't take it, fix these, and they got they got resolved quicker. Feedback loops are tighter. And then what happens is over time, once they come into distro, there's the, the value of the ones that actually come into distro are real because they are real issues that we didn't catch, show gaps in our test coverage, show gaps in our process, and then we can augment them. Right now, we see them coming in, and it's, it's, it's a fire hose coming into distro and then coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I think this will be good for us. It may feel a little bit of pain for the first cycle as we implement these things and people feel it, but the second cycle and towards the end of the cycle, I think everyone will actually like it feel like we're getting more useful information as opposed to. And so the, the other parts of the upstream quality plan, um, that, that is our plan to get back to the question that we're in the, the blueprints of automation, you know, PTAs and so on. Because um, here we're also depending on, uh, for example, some common infrastructure that are put in place, uh, the Jenkins yeah. system and so on. So totally use QA for that. Right. Yeah, well, no, people's here. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, like they've got that. Right. They've got those processes set up, and they've got a lot of knowledge in those things. So I would I strongly know. suggest you go grab Patrick or Peter. Nice. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and and to this point, uh, yeah. the problem is that not everything is in place yet. Right. So it's taking time. This is, you know, taking time. Uh, if we do rely heavily on that to be available in order to get started with that whole process, it's, you know. How should we block that? Well, what do you see what do you as, a, as blockers? Uh, blockers? I don't think there's what, any blockers. Why are we in time? Well, I mean, I think we're in well in progress. I think, I think David's, con David's concern is question. that there is automation as a criteria, and we 
we're not there yet with our Jenkins integration. And how do we, right? Well, we're just, we're, I mean, we're, we're running main chat, right? So I think it is automated for the, the unit tests we have. I'm, I'm fairly certain the infrastructure exists. So now it's defining what it means for the project and to be and get implementing it on all. Yeah, <laughs> I view that as a. I view that as a person on the left side of there. That's Places one of where you can't do the automated tests yet, you do manual tests. So, but, I mean, Alex, I mean, you do have make check running for the projects that are in there? Or no? Yeah. yeah. Which well, projects do you have in Jenkins now? Most of them. Yeah. I need to so. go through and finish this. So the migration to the, uh, the shared uh, Jenkins instance, Jenkins instance mm -hmm. is, is finished, and all projects well, are covered. No, it's, it's in not, progress. It's, it's a long, it's a long pilot. 80 percent of the way. And I think there has to be a reasonable discussion between platform and strategy to see where, where the gap is and then if you know we, we, we want to achieve full coverage, mm -hmm. it's unrealistic to say we will get well, to remember 100%. When it, remember when it comes to this, a pragmatic approach, when we said like we have to call for full 100% te test coverage just does not mean day one mm -hmm. full automated test coverage, it means um, new bug, yeah. new feature, new code, new code automated test. And it means, you know, that sort of thing. It's like, we're, this is not a boil the ocean type of thing. Like, day one, hold your feet to the fire button for the automation. Well, at least uh, some reasonable percentage can be between, like, 80%. Right. So, for instance, Ken, we were talking last night about Quiver, and, and Ken said, you know, there's going to be points in this code where i got to refactor to automate that if I have one new feature. Like, yeah, and that's exactly what we mean by that. It's like, once you get to that point and you need to do that, that's part of the coding that has to happen for that feature. So Ken's, you know, if, if with that in mind, if Ken's got 14 features he wants to get done with Quiver and knows that it's gonna, he has to make those automated, it's like I can only take in five of those a cycle because I also have to do <coughs> this to make this better. And then fully expecting, because I've seen this before several times, that you start to go faster, you start to go faster, and then all of a sudden it's, it's just a, it's a natural thing, you're actually going faster than you were before because you've got, this, you've got the safety net. And the end result will be better. <coughs> So initially, assuming that uh, there are no automatic testing or unit testing in, in, let's say, South Unity, it will take time to build that, right? And that's the part where you don't want to say exactly like how much uh, the coverage should be. Right, and then right. So we were talking to Neil and, and Sam about this, and we, we basically, in the same same approach was, all right, Neil, so if we have this as an expectation of automated tests, what does that mean for you, confidence, and unity? So we've got to instrument a couple of things. We know how to do it, we just have to do it. All right, go to town, go nuts. And uh, when, when we set up these criteria as, as actually gating parameters, <coughs> at the point uh, it might become uh, necessary to actually have criteria as different for different projects. So some critical yep. components would need to have really like 100% coverage, no exceptions. Some might require some flexibility. UIs, UI projects, projects for instance, can have a bit relaxed. Like core or something like, like mm -hmm. No, agreed. And is and the, uh, the the machine uh, required to do graphical tests uh, online, or is it? What do you mean? Um, the one where we can run, you know, a Nix server. Um, I believe they have started that. I don't think we are using it. Um, we haven't gotten there. But are you guys going to use LLVM pipe for that now, not the machine, right? You're going to use LLVM pipe? Uh, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that would work with not. <coughs> it works. It works with the yeah. yeah. So I think you should use LLVM pipe instead of machine. <coughs> but also, like, uh, because sure. these things require a lot of effort. I'm sorry, putting, say again. Putting, putting the uh, tests require a lot of effort, conscious effort. We can't just assume that, you know, okay, let's try to have unit test. So if you're talking about having test for, for existing code, uh, that's going to take even more. Right, and that's why we're using the Gwiver example. If Gwiver was refactoring right. components, fully expect that to be the case yeah. off the well, bat. But I do expect that. over time that a lot of that stuff gets ironed out and starts to, to take shape and all of a sudden you have a you have testable code. You have testable paths. Tests become very. We're not going to go back and say we're not going to upload anything because we have to write tests for everything. Right. We're going to, right. as and new features get added, tests have to go with it, and yes. sometimes that requires exactly. more changes under the covers. And it's but important to actually have a conscious uh, sort of like 
being part of the development, so it's whatever tasks, so, you know, yeah. guidelines have to be really Which strong. is why I was very happy to see a lot of the test-driven development discussions happening last week, because that's, that's the, the philosophical nature of this. Yeah. I think we need to work on an internal policy, and I started a discussion with David and Pat that bugs, well, features that go in and bugs that get fixed need to come with a regression test, because that's kind of the bare minimum that we could require. It's still going to be a lot of work and we'll, there will be trade-offs, but that's kind of what we need to establish as a base rule, and then going forward, see how we get to 100% unit coverage. <coughs> we have five minutes. Anything else? Um, have you gone through what kind of uh, to, uh, checks to put in, like the other means? Take analysis is, for example, another one. Are, are you considering, for example, sure. that also as one possible gating criteria? <coughs> I'm sorry, say again, what kind of analyzer? Static uh, analyzer? Yeah, for example. So I think uh, if we don't have, we, we in distro, <coughs> when we were coming up with this, didn't have that in mind because that wasn't for us. That's more, I think that's like the coverity thing that you were putting in place. Ted's already got something like that. We're leaving that that, that type of thing up for to the team. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I encourage upstreams to take those things on. I mean, I, I love to see when bugifies and a lot of those analyzers are put into the projects because I just think that's a good practice, but it wasn't something that we wanted to mandate. That's not one of those things. For the acceptance criteria. I mean, same, same applies for coherity reports because just like bugs, like, there are many false alarms there as well, and someone has to be actively. I, I do view that as, as, as a, a wonderful way for development teams to use information to their benefit. Yeah. So when Ted showed me coverity, I was very excited to see that because I thought that would really help them, them increase their velocity by finding things quicker and getting getting through noise. Let's say. Yeah. I think, yeah, you can, you can make it more upstream. Uh, <coughs> that, that's, that's the plan. Yeah. We're doing a, a trial right now, okay. and then once this proves to be really workable and scales, so we don't get a you know 80% false positives mm -hmm. or negatives, whatever, um, then we'll right. widen the scope and pu push, push it and on. And we will get locked. I mean, we will. Just it's just the way of. We need to find a smart way how to handle that. Does, now, does this, this go right into the blueprint? Or is someone going to put this into the blueprint? To me, put it into the blueprint. Okay. First, I'll make sure that Etherpad gives into the blueprint so we know who's. Etherpad's 100% reliable, I've heard, because people complain about that. It's the web, it's reliable. Yeah. All right. I have to ask the web apps. Cool. Yeah, I hate the Anything web. else? Thanks, everybody. That was awesome. <laughs>